My name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Glamma. Oh, I love you too, Glamma girls. Hi everyone, Glamma here. Welcome back to Made with Love by Glamma, where everything here is always made and taught by me with love. And I want to thank you before I forget for watching that commercial and ad at the beginning of this video. And there's going to probably be some in the middle of the tutorial as well as at the end. And I want to thank you so much in advance for watching them all the way through their entirety. It helps me out and it affords me the ability to bring you these tutorials for free and to keep purchasing all the necessary items that I need to make tutorials. Alrighty guys, so this is what we're going to be making today. We're going to be making a Charlie Brown hat and I'm going to try to make the face look just like that. <laughs> Don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but we're going to give it a go. Alrighty, so I'm going to let you know what you need to get started for this project. I'm using Karen Simply Soft yarn in the color Light Country Peach. You'll also be needing a crochet hook. I'm using 3.00 millimeter because I'm making this for a newborn, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a stitch marker, two black buttons, black worsted weight yarn for the face, and maybe a thinner thread so that you can sew the buttons on. Okay, let's get started, but I wanted to let you know that when I made the Snoopy hat, I told you that I was going to insert the clip for that hat into this Charlie Brown hat because it's basically the exact same pattern. I have my Charlie Brown hat right here and so to, to make this actual beanie it's the exact same pattern that I used for the Snoopy beanie, okay? The only thing that's going to be different is I'm going to show you how to crochet the ears and the nose after you watch this clip and then we'll sew the face on together. Alrighty, enjoy watching the beanie tutorial and I'll see you when you're finished. We're gonna get started with a magic ring or a magic circle, however you wanna call it. Leave yourself a little bit of a tail so that you can um, um, thread your tapestry needle and weave it in later. So let's go ahead and start off as if we're making a slip knot, but instead of bringing this all the way through, we're going to bring that working tail up and we're going to grab it with our hook and pull it through. Okay. And that is your magic ring. And I know that this is white and it might be difficult to see. So I will try to hold up my uh, hands as close as I can to the camera um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to chain two one and two because we're going to be making double crochets and for double crochets you need a height of three chains so I'm going to use that one loop as a chain and then I chained two others okay and so now we're going to make 12 double crochets into the ring Alrighty, for those of y'all that are new, to make a double crochet, just yarn over, go in through the loop, pick up the yarn, bring it through, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, go through the second two, and that's a double crochet. So right now we have a chain and two double crochets. We need 10 more double crochets. So at the end, you will have 12 double crochets plus a chain. And like always, I like to use my chains as a filler. Most people use that as a double crochet, but I like to use it as a filler. And please excuse the noise in the background. Those are my dogs chasing each other. Um, there's no carpeting in here, so you can hear their nails all throughout the house. <laughs> all right, so I will meet you back here when you've got 12 double crochets. Okay, so I've got my 12 double crochets plus that initial chain that we started with. 
and so now you can tighten up your ring if you want just pull on that tail that magic ring tail and that should close it up nicely see and then if you want you can already um, thread your tapestry needle and weave your tail um, in through there on the on the inside whoops and so now let's get started with round two so for round two we are going to ignore that chain and we're going to go into the first double crochet that we made normally you would go into the one two third chain and join with a slip stitch but like I said I like to use that as a filler so we're going to go into the first double crochet stitch that we made and we are going to slip stitch through that okay and I think from here on out I instead of the chaining of three I think I'm going to chain two for um for the height of the next rounds right here one and two since I'm only using that as a filler um, see how it kind of I don't know kind of feel like this is too long so I'm gonna just chain up two and I'm still gonna make double crochets and I'm gonna go right back into that same space where I just slip stitched and I'm gonna put two double crochets in there because this is our increase round so there's one and there's two so in the same space we have a chain two and two double crochets and now in every stitch from here on to the end of the row we're going to put two double crochets into each stitch okay alrighty just like that alright so I will leave you to it and I will meet you back here when you've got two double crochets in each of the remaining stitches. I'll see you over here. So I have one more stitch to go into. That's not a stitch. That one is our last one. That one right there is where we made our slip stitch and then chained two. So don't get confused like I used to. I used to stitch into there and into there and I wondered why um, everything became so wavy. <laughs> Well, that's because I went into the wrong stitch. My ending stitch is right there. So let's put two double crochets into there. Okay, once again, we're going to use that chain as a filler. This time it's a chain two, one, two. So I'm going to go right into that very first double crochet that I made and make a slip stitch. And now I'm going to chain two again let me look at this yeah I think I like it better with the chain two as my filler because here see how it kind of left a little bit of a bump it's kind of raised up right there because I made three chains if I was going to chain into that top of that chain three and slip stitch that would have been fine but because I'm using it as a filler it kind of made a bump right there so I like using the chain two I think okay so now what I'm gonna do for round three is I'm going to put one double crochet into that same stitch where I just made my slip stitch and chain and I'm going to double crochet and then in the next one I am going to put two double crochets this is still an increase row okay but we're not increasing quite as much we're not putting two into every single stitch we're just going to put two into every other stitch Okay, and so now we're going to put one double crochet and now two double crochets. Okay, so just follow that sequence of two double crochets and then one, two double crochets and then one, and then I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I'm almost finished with round three. I just made one double crochet and if you did this right, your last stitch should have two double crochets, okay? Generally, if you start off with one double crochet and this is an increase row, then you should end up with two so that it's a uniform sequence. One, two, one, two. And when you come around this way, it's one, two, and then we're back to that one that we initially made. So there's two, and now we're going to join. We're going to skip the chain two, go into the first double crochet that we made, make a slip stitch, chain two, 
There's our filler stitch, our filler chain. Go right back into that space and make one double crochet. So this is still a, um, an increase round, okay? Round four is still an increase round. So we're going to put one double crochet there and one into the next one. And now we're going to put two double crochets into the next stitch. Okay, so now we're going to put two single crochets, one there, one there, and then an increase of two double crochets in there. One double crochet in there, one double crochet in there, and then two double crochets in there, okay? So like I said, this is still an increase row. We're just increasing um, every, every two stitches instead of every other stitch now. So one into here, one into here, and then the next one is an increase stitch. So we put two into there, one and two. And just follow that sequence until you get around here and that's where I'll meet you. Okay, so I'm at the end of row four and I just made my two double crochets into the last stitch. And I'm gonna skip the chain, go into the first double crochet, slip stitch, chain two. And now we're starting round five and this is the last round of our increase row, okay? And now we're going to put three single crochets, one here, one there, one there, before we make our increase stitch, okay? So put one into the same space you just came out of with that chain, one double crochet there, one into the next, one into the next, and now your increase stitch. Put two double crochets into that one. Okay, and now we're going to make three double crochets into the next three stitches. One there, one there, one there, and then an increased stitch. Okay, one, one, and one. And now in the next one, our increase. We'll put two in there. Alrighty, follow that sequence and you got it. Meet me at the end. <laughs> okay, so I'm finished with round five and I went ahead and weaved in my little magic ring tail already. And I just realized that I didn't use my stitch marker because normally I don't need to anymore, but where you would have used it, and hopefully you're watching this video all the way through its entirety before you start your project. That's usually what I tell everyone to do because you never know, sometimes I change things up and so you should watch the whole, all my videos through their entirety because I might tell you to do something at the beginning of a segment and then when I come back, I might have said, oh, by the way, I changed it, do this instead. So you usually want to watch my tutorials all the way through their entirety first. So if you are going to use a stitch marker, um, where you would use it is you would chain up and then in your very first double crochet, that's where you would have put it so that you would know where to slip stitch into to end the row, okay? So I usually don't need to use the stitch marker anymore. And when I was weaving in my tail, I messed up my nail, darn it. I never can go without messing up my nails ever. <laughs> it's cause they're still kind of sort of wet. So I'm getting dings all over them. Anyway, so I'm gonna close up round five. I'm gonna ignore the chain two, go into the first double crochet slip stitch into that, chain two, and now from this point on, we're not gonna be making increases anymore. See how nice and flat that sits? That is a good top of a beanie hat, yay! <laughs> I love this um, beanie pattern that I've come up with. Um, I call it Glamour's Perfect Beanie, <laughs> just because I just love how good it comes out each time. Okay, so now for round six, all the way to, depending on the size that you're gonna make, or however long you want it to fit on the person, if you want it above the ears, then you would make it less rows. If you want it the middle of their ears, you would make it a little bit more. If you want it to cover all of their ears, then you just keep trying this on the person that you're making it for until it fits where you want it to fit on that person or on yourself. 
But for this particular beanie for my glamour baby that's soon to be here, I think I'm going to do round six, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably up to round eleven um, before I come back. Okay, so what we're going to do now, since we're not making increase rows, we're going to put one double crochet right back into that space. Okay. And then we're just going to put one single crochet into each stitch around. And what you'll start noticing is that it's not going to keep getting bigger now. Now it's going to start curving under. Okay. All right, so that's it. And let me see. I made a Charlie Brown hat, which is going to be my next tutorial. Here's my Charlie Brown hat. Let me see, make sure that I use the right amount, that I'm going to make the right amount of rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Actually I did 12 rows and then we're going to come back and do a row of single crochets. But the 12th row might be a little bit too long. I don't know. Um, but I did it just because newborns grow so fast. So you can either go with 10, 11, 12, however, however many rows you want. So yeah. Look forward to this tutorial next. I don't want to completely show it to you, so I'm just in and out, in and out, in and out. There's, <laughs> there's my Charlie Brown hat that we're going to be making for my next tutorial. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so that you can get notified when my next tutorial comes up. All you have to do is subscribe, hit the red subscribe button, go into settings and um, click on something that lets you know that you can get alerts for whenever I upload a new video. Okay, and that's how you can get alerted for each of my videos every time that I upload a new one. Alrighty guys, so I will see you back when I am finished with my row 12. And uh, I don't know how many rows you'll do, but I'll see you then. I'm almost finished. I'm on row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm on row 10, so I'm almost finished. Okay, so I'm done with my 12th row, and now I'm going to close the row, skip the chain, go into the first double crochet, slip stitch, now I'm just going to chain one because I'm going to put one row of single crochet all along for a finishing edge, okay? So I'm going to go right back into there, make a single crochet, okay? And that's where I will slip stitch when I come back around, okay? So let's just make one single crochet into each stitch and try to... Um, crochet with a light tension, okay, so that it doesn't make the forehead of this beanie too tight, okay, because it is a tighter stitch, so we don't want to make it too tight on the forehead of whoever you're making this for. Okay, so I just finished that row of single crochets, and now I'm going to slip stitch. I'm going to skip that chain one, and I'm going to go right into the first single crochet that I made with a slip stitch and I'm going to chain one and now we're going to leave a bit of a tail so that we can thread our tapestry needle and weave this in. Okay, so we are finished with the beanie portion of our hat. Yay! Alright, now just go and weave in your tail and then um, we will make all the little embellishments for the Charlie Brown hat. So, all right, hope you enjoyed this beanie tutorial. <laughs> okay, so I didn't take notes when I made the nose or the ear. So, and it's been about a month since I've made this. So I'm gonna try to remember how I made it. It's hard to count the stitches, but <clears throat> I think I put five single crochets into a magic ring. So let's try that to start with. Leave yourself a little bit of a tail so that you'll have room to weave that in later. Actually, you might not need to weave it in. You can just hide it inside there with the polyfill. Oh, that's another thing that I almost forgot to tell you that you'll need. You'll need polyfill. If you made the Snoopy hat, you'll probably already have some on hand because we used it for the nose and, and uh, so yeah. 
If you don't, just go get some at Joann's Fabric or at Walmart. They have polyfill at most places. Okay, wait, I didn't make a magic ring, did I? So just go ahead and start as if you're making a slip knot, but instead of pulling that all the way through, bring the tail up and hook your yarn around it and pull it through the loop, okay? And I'm not gonna chain up because we're gonna work in a continuous spiral. Okay, so now let's just chain. Let's try five, not chain, single crochet five. And I'm gonna put my stitch marker there even though I don't need it, but for those of y'all that wanna use your stitch marker, that's where you would put it. And you'll know that that's where the first um, row ends and where the second row begins. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and now we're gonna pull that tail tight. Okay, and now we are going to make our next row. So this is row two. If you're taking notes for yourself in case you want to make another one or in case, um, yeah, because that way you'll know how many rows you did and you won't be left like me to guess what I did. So yeah, now we're going to single crochet two into the very first stitch that we made. There's one. And right there on that very first one, that's where you will move your stitch marker to for your new round. So this is round two. You want to keep track of the rounds, like I said, in case you plan on making another one. Okay, so there's one. And there's your second one. And just put two into each of the five single crochets that we made, okay? And I'll see you when we get back around. Okay, so I'm done and I have 10 single crochets and I'm back at the beginning here or the end. <laughs> okay, and we're going to single crochet into there. Okay, there's one and we are going to move our stitch marker. Hey, hashtag, you just jumped on my table, didn't you? You're blocking my light. There's one. And we're going to put a second one in there now. Okay. And in the next one, we're just going to put one. And then we're going to put two into the next stitch. So we're going to make an increased stitch every other stitch. Okay. So there's our two. Now one. Now two in the next one. And now one in the next, and then two in the next, and then one. My hands look really orange. This camera is going bad. Okay, and then two in this one, and then one in the last one, which comes out perfect because we started with two and we ended with one. Awesome. Okay, and so let me see. Did I make another row of increase? I don't think so. One, two, three. No, I think now at this point, I'm just going to make single crochets. So for row, this is going to be row four, right? Stitch into there, make a single crochet, and move up your stitch marker to the next round. And let's try one single crochet in each stitch and see what happens. Okay, meet me back when you get to your stitch marker. Alrighty. Okay, so I just counted. I have 15 stitches and I just counted around the bottom of the nose and there's 15 stitches. So I think I remembered. So yay, I think we did it right. Okay, so now let's just keep making rows um, following that same instruction that I just did for the last 
around which is just make one single crochet into each stitch okay and let me try to count to see how many rows I did that for so there's our second round of just single crochets let me see I have one two three four five it looks like maybe six rows all together and we have one two three four and this is five let's do this for this row and one more row and then meet me back here and I'll see how that looks alrighty okay so this is six rows and I think I'm gonna make a seventh because yeah I think I'm gonna make a seventh row so go ahead and make one more and then let's meet back here okay okay so I've got seven rows and I'm not going to finish this off completely because I already have a nose and I'm not making another hat. I just wanted to show you how I made the nose. So let's right here make a slip stitch. Okay. And then you would chain one and then you would cut this and pull this all the way through. And you would leave a long, long tail though. Well, not long, long, but long enough to sew the nose onto your hat. Okay. But I'm going to pretend as if I just did that. And I'm going to weave in this inner tail, okay? So pretend that I've already done that because I'm not going to finish it off. So you go ahead and thread your tapestry needle with this yarn on the inside. And, um, yeah. And weave it in and then you can cut the excess tail off. And now take your polyfill and just start filling your nose. Okay? Fill it as much as you want and that's probably all I really need and just go ahead and then you would get your hat and I put my nose on the opposite side of where my seam is to my hat and because we made our seam the way that we did we use that chain as a filler you can hardly tell where the seam is but I still wanted to use that for the back and I just centered my nose and it looks like I went up or let me see one two three four five between six seven eight between six and the eighth row is where I put my nose so put your nose there and then just sew it on if you don't know how to sew it on just go watch my Snoopy video and see how I sewed the nose on but you just pretty much get your tail your long tail that you leave right here like that and just sew it on okay just sew it all the way around and uh, that's it so yeah and if you want your nose bigger um, before making those rows of just single crochets you can make another increase row if you'd like or if you don't want your nose this big make one less row of increase rows okay but this is exactly the way I made mine so yay, now we're going to go on to the ears and then we'll put the face on together. Okay, so I just made an ear because I wanted to test it out before I came on camera and tested it out with you guys having to sit there and watch and I think I've got it. So now I'll show you what I did to get the ear. Um, you might leave a little bit of a tail on this end but you're gonna mostly need the longer tail on this end to sew the ear on you're gonna need two ears now I'll show you how to make one I just made a slip knot like that and then I chained two one and two and in the second one I put five single crochets into there there's one two and three and four and five and I actually like how that hole is a little big in the center because it makes it look like the ear hole that we have <laughs> okay and then chain one and then turn your little ear and you're gonna put two single crochets in every stitch so you get to the other end and then meet me back here so I'm at the end and now we are going to chain one 
and we're going to repeat the same thing. Oh, and you should have 10 stitches now that you put two into each of the five. You should have 10, and now you chained one, and now you're going to just repeat that row. Two single crochets into each stitch till you get to the end, okay? And I think that is all I did. But I'll meet you at the end to see if it looks right. Okay, so I just did that. Two stitches in each row, and yep, that looks about right. This one looks a little bit more narrow, but I'll tell you why. When you get ready to sew this on, um, what I did is I kind of squeezed it in like this so that it would be shaped kind of like our ear. So you might want to do the same thing, okay? Just kind of, when you sew it on right there, just kind of tug on it a little bit as you're sewing it so that it looks like an ear. And that's it. Just sew them on. Um, just place it wherever you think it looks good. Okay? Okay, so I pulled up the shot of um, Charlie Brown and his eyes are pretty close together on either side of his nose. They're not on top of the nose. They're like right almost even with them. So this is where I was thinking of placing my eyes a little close to it and about right there. So just to let you know, that's about where I'm thinking of doing it. So right here is the edge of the nose. Maybe one, two stitches over and up a little bit. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to thread my tapestry needle and I'm going to use um, crochet thread because it's thin enough for the buttons. You can use whatever size buttons that you want, but I know that his, um, his eyes are pretty small for his face and so that's why I use this size of, eye, of eyes or of buttons. So okay, that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to sew them on and I'll be back. Okay, so I already sewed that one on. Now I'm going to sew this one. And I think I'll put it about right there. I'm going to come in from inside of the hat and find my buttonhole. Okay, like that. There's the inside of the buttonhole. And I don't have a knot on this. I'm just going to leave kind of a tail in there and I'm only going to go um, in and out of the button one time. That's all it really needs. Okay, and now that you've done that, just go to the inside of your hat and just cut your thread like that. And then just make a knot, just knot it in place like I did over here. And you can cut yours shorter if you want. I just wanted to leave mine a little long just in case. Throw it in the wash. Um, it won't unravel. You'll have a little bit of a tail that if it does start to unravel, you'll catch it in time and maybe be able to re-knot it. Okay. I think I will shorten these a teeny bit like that. Alrighty, so there's the eyes. Okay, now let's go with the smile. So there's his eyes. Okay, that looks about right. And his smile, I think I'm going to make it kind of low, like about here and come way low. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I'm going to get Red Heart Super Saver black yarn because it's a thick yarn and the smile will show. So I'll be right back. Okay, so with my bigger tapestry needle, I'm going to thread the Red Heart yarn through here. I think I'll try maybe right there. And I'm kind of going... I'm not going through the big gaps. I'm kind of going through the double crochet stitch so that it stays better. Let's try that. Let me see. It's on the one. It's on the actual one, two, three, four, the fifth one. One, two, three, four, five. So about there is where I want to come out at. 
So let's do this, leave ourselves a little bit of a tail like that. Come in about right here and let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. Tug on it a little bit so that it hangs down a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a smile line. So I'm going to come right back up. Okay. And then I'm going to go this way with it and make a little smile line. Oops, it's stuck on his nose. Like that, see? And I'm going to come do the same thing on this side. Over here, I'm going to weave it in and out a couple times, though. Go make a little knot, I mean. Not too tight. So I don't want to tug on that little smile line too much. going to go ahead and leave a little bit of a tail there. There. And now with this leftover thread, I'm going to do the same thing over here. Oops. I want to pull on that a little bit because like I said, I want to be able to play with it and make him a little frustrated if I want or happy. Um, yeah, like that. went in about right there to about right there so let me come in about here leave a little bit of a tail about right there go in and there's the smile line now on the inside I've got the tail, the initial tail from the smile, and the two tails from right now. So I'm going to um, probably knot them all together. <clears throat> so now I've disconnected from my needle, and I'm going to first tie the two smile line threads together. Okay, and now I'm going to take that first tail and do it with these two tails. Right about like that. And then just trim these. And that's it. Yeah, okay. So the next thing that I want to do is some eyebrows. He has some happy looking little eyebrows right there. Maybe about right there. I don't know. Whoops, where'd you go? Yeah, about there. Let me go out a little bit. About there. I don't know, is that too wide? Let me see. Come out through here. Okay, so I've got that one in. And now I'm going to come over here to the inside and make a knot with the initial tail. Being careful not to tighten it too much because we don't want to um, make the eyebrow too tight. I want to do it kind of loosely so you can move the eyebrow around if you want. One more knot. Okay, and then I'm going to leave it connected. You can tie this a little. You can cut this if you want. I think I'll leave it in case I need it for later. I might need that tail for something later. Okay, and so now just kind of eyeball where you want the next eyebrow to be and I think I'll go about right there and it looks like I made it about 
So on the one, two, looks like there's three. So there's one, two, maybe about right there, maybe. Is that too wide? Let's see. Oh, that looks cute. Might be a little crooked, huh? But I think it adds to the cuteness. <laughs> All right, so there's that. And I might make a knot with that first tail from the first eyebrow. Just very gently make a knot right here. If you can think of a nicer way to do it where you don't have all these threads, then awesome for you. <laughs> this is how I'm going to do it and just leave it. So yeah. Alrighty, and I will cut these. I'm going to make a couple more knots. But I like the fact that I'm leaving the eyebrows loose, the mouth loose, because you can change the character of Charlie Brown. I know that those of y'all that watched Charlie Brown when you were younger, like me, you remember how sometimes he'd have lines right there when he was frustrated or upset, but I thought I would make a happy Charlie Brown or a uh, not so happy Charlie Brown. <laughs> All right, now comes the little curly Q hair. Let's figure that out now. I wonder if I'll have enough with this. I think so. Okay, let's look at our picture again. This is where I got my idea from. It was from the movie, and then I thought, hey, how can I do that? So I think I'm gonna go up to the top of the head to start with. Leave myself a little bit of a tail. And how do I want to do this? It's kind of a curly cue. Hmm. Let me see. I wonder if I can do that and then sew that little leave it loose like that so that it looks 3D because I don't think I want to actually stitch it down. Let me see. You know what? I think I'm going to do it like that, guys. Did you see what I did? I just kind of curled it. I'm holding it with my finger. I'm going in here to finish the little curly hair. Leave it kind of loose. And then I'm going to come over here to where it's crisscrossed. And try to figure out how I can sew that into place. Let me see. Yeah. I don't know, might work, might not. We'll see. If not, I'll be taking it apart. Okay, so there's that. And we can even sew that little curly cue up there so it'll stay in place. As so. And you can move this around. You can make it however shaped you want it. And then I'm going to go back in here. And I'm going to, because this is a bigger curl than the other one. So I'm going to go in here. Come out. 
shape it how I want it. And then go back in. Keep it where we want it. Yeah, I like that. Yay. Okay, and now we are close to where we started our first tail. I'm going to tie these two tails together. Here's my first one, and here's the one I just ended with. I'm going to very loosely tie a knot, and then for my third and fourth knot, I'll go a little tighter. nice and tight. That's nice and tight. And now I'll just trim that. And there we go. There is, oh he looks sad right now. There is Charlie Brown and his hair. Yay! And you can, it's loose so you can make it as round or shape it however you want. Um, yeah. So what do you guys think? I think that's adorable. I think it's cute. And I think he even has like hairs in the back, like two or three hairs in the back over here. And I just found this picture and sure enough. So I'm gonna probably do that too. So I'll be back. Okay, so there are his little hairs from the back and a uh, little similar. <laughs> Could have made this one a little longer, but yeah, so there it is, and I had so much fun making this. I know that when um, the girls and I went and saw the movie, that's what gave me the idea to make Snoopy Brown, Snoopy Brown, <laughs> Snoopy and Charlie Brown hats for my new Glamma Princess coming. So yeah, um, I'm going to go put it on the doll, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so here is my little doll wearing the Charlie Brown hat adorable. I've got her in my Glamma Princess's little bed, her little crib that we just put together for her. So that's what it looks like on her and that's probably what it's going to look like on my Glamma Princess. And there's the Snoopy hat that we made in the last tutorial. So yeah, I just adore it. Oh, if she was only having twins, one could wear the Charlie Brown hat and one could be wearing the Snoopy hat. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me here at Made With Love by Glamma, where everything is always made and taught by me with love, one stitch at a time. All righty, guys, till next time. I love you so much. Don't forget how much I love you. And don't forget to love yourselves and everyone you come in contact with. All righty, guys, bye-bye. Thank, Thank you for, for watching, watching our Glamour's channel. channel.